today we will talk about trigonometric substitution. You use trigonometric substitution when you have a square root contained in the integral. So let's start with the example of the square root of a squared minus x squared. You would use the substitution x equals sine theta and the identity 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. If you have the expression the square root of a squared plus x squared, you would use the substitution x equals a tangent theta and the identity 1 plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. Finally, if you have the expression the square root of x squared minus a squared, you use the substitution x equals a secant theta and the identity secant squared theta minus 1 equals tangent squared theta. So now let's talk about how to approach these type of problems. You first determine the substitution and plug in the values in the integral. You then use the identity to get rid of the square root. You then evaluate the integral just like you would evaluate any other integral. And then you solve for the trig function in the original substitution. Then you draw a right triangle slash solve for the unknown side using the just solve trig function. And finally, you solve for theta and the trig function using the triangle. Get the evaluate integral in terms of x. So now let's try the integral of x cubed times the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. We first realize we must use the substitution x equals sine theta. Therefore, dx is equal to cosine theta d theta. Now let's plug this back into the integral and we get sine cubed theta times the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. So now let's get rid of the square root. So the, using the trig identity, 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. So this becomes the integral of sine cubed theta times the square root of cosine squared theta times cosine theta d theta. This becomes the integral of sine cubed theta times cosine squared theta d theta. Now let's evaluate this integral. So we siphon off a sine, so we get sine theta times sine squared theta times cosine squared theta d theta. Now let's use a substitution u equals cosine theta. Therefore, du is equal to minus sine theta d theta. So now let's plug this back in. So the sine will cancel out, put a negative out front here. So we get the integral of sine squared theta u squared du. And using the identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, we can solve for sine. So it's sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta or that in this case we use u so 1 minus u squared so let's plug this back in so this becomes 1 minus u squared times u squared du now let's solve the integral so we get no, minus the integral of u squared minus u to the fourth du now let's evaluate this integral so we get minus u to the third over 3 minus u to the fifth over 5. And now let's simplify. So we get minus u cubed over 3 plus u to the fifth over 5, where u is equal to cosine theta. So let's plug that back in. So we get minus cosine to the third power theta over 3 plus cosine to the fifth theta over 5. So after evaluating that integral, we got negative cosine to third power theta over 3 plus cosine to fifth theta over 5. Now we must write these trig identities in terms of x. So we have to first solve for the original substitution. x equals sine theta. So we see sine theta is equal to x. So we draw a right triangle. Theta right here. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side would be x. 
and the hypotenuse will be 1. Now we solve for this unknown side using the Pythagorean theorem. So the unknown side plus x squared equals 1. Solving for the unknown side, we get 1 minus x squared. Take the square root of the unknown side. So the unknown side is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's put that here. So now cosine of theta, which is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is square root of 1 minus x squared. Hypotenuse is just 1. So this becomes the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now we just plug this in for cosine theta. So this becomes minus the square root of 1 minus x squared to the third power divided by 3 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared to the fifth power over 5. And that's our final answer. So now let's try the integral of dx over the square root of x squared plus 16. So we first must use a substitution x equals 4 tangent theta. Therefore, dx is equal to 4 secant squared theta d theta. Let's plug this back in the integral. Get the integral of 4 secant squared theta d theta over the integral of 16 tangent squared theta plus 16. Now let's simplify the square root. So the square root of 16 tangent squared theta plus 16 just simplifies to square root of 16 tangent squared theta plus 1. Tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. So it becomes the square root of 16 secant squared theta. And now we just simplify, it becomes 4 secant theta. Now let's plug this back into the integral. So it becomes the integral of 4 secant squared theta over 4 secant theta d theta. This cancels out. So now we get the integral of just secant theta d theta. So we all know the integral of secant theta d theta is just the natural logarithm of secant theta plus tangent theta. So now we must solve the original substitution for the trigonometric function. So that becomes tangent theta is equal to x over 4. We draw a right triangle. Theta is here. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So this side is x, this side is 4, this is our unknown side. So using the Pythagorean theorem, 4 squared plus x squared is equal to unknown side squared. Now we discover both sides to get the unknown side. We get the unknown side is equal to the square root of 16 plus x squared. So this is equal to the square root of 16 plus x squared. So now we just solve for the original functions in terms of x. So this becomes the natural logarithm of secant theta is equal to uh, hypotenuse over adjacent. So it becomes the square root of 16 plus x squared over the adjacent side, which is just 4, plus tangent theta, which we already solved for. It's just x over 4. And that's our final answer. So now let's try the integral of x over the square root of x squared minus 7 dx. So we first realize we must use the substitution x equals the square root of 7 secant theta. Therefore dx is equal to the square root of 7 secant theta tangent theta d theta. Let's plug these back into the integral. So we get the integral of square root of 7 secant theta times the square root of 7 secant theta tangent theta d theta over the square root of 7 secant squared theta minus 7. Now let's simplify this integral. 
So we get 7 secant squared theta tangent theta d theta over square root of 7 secant squared theta minus 7. So let's simplify the square root. So the square root of 7 secant squared theta minus 7 is simply just the square root of 7 secant squared theta minus 1. This simplifies to 7 tangent squared theta. This just becomes the square root of 7 times tangent theta. Now let's plug the simplified square root into the integral. So it becomes 7 secant squared theta tangent theta d theta over the square root of 7 tangent theta. Now let's simplify the integral again. So this becomes 7 over the square root of 7 times secant squared theta d theta. So the integral of secant squared theta is simply tangent theta. So this becomes 7 over the square root of 7 times tangent theta. So now we must solve for the trigonometric function in the original substitution. So it becomes x over the square root of 7 is equal to secant theta. Now let's draw our right triangle. Here's our theta, and uh, so secant theta is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent. So our hypotenuse is x, or adjacent is square root of 7. This is our unknown side. So we must solve for the unknown side, so it becomes uh, square root of the 7 squared plus the unknown side squared equals x squared. Solving for the unknown side, the unknown side is equal to x squared minus 7, take the square root, and the unknown side is found to be the square root of x squared minus 7. So now let's put this in terms of x, so 7 over the square root of 7, tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so that's just equal to the square root of x squared minus 7 over the square root of 7. Now let's simplify this further. The square root of 7 times the square root of 7 just becomes 7. 7 over 7 is 1. So our final answer is the square root of x squared minus 7.